We're following the latest in Pakistan, where former cricket star Imran Khan has declared victory. He has vowed to transform the country into a new Pakistan as prime minister. Now, opposition parties have slammed Khan's victory, claiming the election was rigged. And today, a European monitoring team said there wasn't an even playing field in the prime minister race. Deadly bombings and clashes have also overshadowed the race. Now, this could possibly signal more turmoil than stability moving forward. For more on this, let's bring in CBSN contributor Willis Sparks. He writes for Signal, a newsletter produced by G Zero Media. Good to see you. Good to see you. So he's vowed to change Pakistan uh, on a global scale, on a domestic scale. Can he do that if there are these questions that are lingering about his election victory? I think that he's got much bigger questions lingering than just this election victory. Yes, there are reasons to believe that the voting was manipulated, in particular by the Pakistani military. Yes, there's been violence. But the larger question here is, I think that, that Imran Khan is the ultimate bright, shiny object in politics. Mm. He's charismatic, he's smart, he's a huge critic, star, cricket star yeah, in that star, part of the world. Star, yeah. He's a huge star, including in India. And yet, the job that he's, that he's just won is a job that is constrained in a hundred ways. First of all, Pakistan is a country where the military calls the shots. They call the shots on foreign and security policy. And even when you try to get into the issues that Imran Khan says he wants to deal with, like poverty, like corruption, you're not going to deal with those issues unless you deal with the military, because the military has economic interests, personal economic interests, as well as its interest in foreign controlling foreign and security policy. You've got to deal with India at a time when Narendra Modi is popular and powerful going into an election next year. You've got to deal with the squeeze between China on the one hand that's loaning you money to death. There is a debt crisis in Pakistan that has everything to do with money loaned by China. And the Trump administration, which has been outspoken in criticizing Pakistan as a lousy partner in the war on terrorism, who has cut off huge amounts of money to Pakistan, he's got to try to figure out, how do I keep the military happy? Because I'm not going anywhere if the military turns on me the way they turned on my opponent. How do I balance the U.S. and China? How do I deal with India in a country that has enormous economic problems. Nearly 40% of the country lives in poverty by some definitions. And it's one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we're going to be talking about this fascinating person. But the job that he has inherited, that he's won, comes with a lot of limitations that have thwarted his predecessors for decades. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a change in power, we always wonder what it means um, when it comes to the relationship with the U.S. And when you talk about the power of the military, I wonder, does the military have a particular preference whether or not uh, Pakistan is aligned with China or the West? Well, the, the military wants money. <laughs> the military needs money. And China has provided money. And Trump has largely cut them off. So I think that the pragmatic elements in the military leadership are going to say, we need to do what we can to have positive relationships with both. And you've heard, you've heard Mr. Khan saying that as well, saying, Imran Khan has been saying, we want to have good relations with both U.S. and China. Well, good luck. Um, you know, there are still a lot of people in this country who are angry with Imran Khan for things that he said on the campaign trail about how the U.S. shouldn't have just come in and killed Osama bin Laden. This is not how civilized nations behave, <laughs> leaving people in Washington to say civilized nations don't harbor people like Osama bin Laden. Um, and the Chinese are heavily investing in all of these projects that can be valuable for Pakistan's infrastructure if they are cost effective, if they make sense, and if they don't run Pakistan into debt that Pakistan cannot afford to repay. Mm -hmm.